page 63 it says, Now when we sincerely took such a position, the one just described, <clears throat> all sorts of remarkable things followed. It said we had a new employer. Being all-powerful, he provided what we needed if we kept close to him and performed his work well. See, I mean, he's not going to do my work well. I'm going to do his work well. And established on such a footing, we became less and less interested in ourselves, our little plans and designs. More and more, we became interested in seeing what we could contribute to life. See, I was always a taker, and takers are losers in life. Contributors are those that win, I've noticed. And see, as we felt new power flow in, and as we enjoyed peace of mind, as we discovered we could face life successfully, we became conscious of his presence. We began to lose our fear of today, tomorrow, or the hereafter. We were reborn. You know, they used to come over to my house on Monday night in that little church about two blocks from my house, and these guys wanted to talk to me about being reborn. And you know what I did for them? I'm drinking. Man, it's Monday night football. You know? And they, they, they won't talk to me about reborn about 8 o'clock. Be knocking on, and I'd run them off. I'd say, you guys get out of here. It's Monday night football. I don't want to talk to you. Get. And that's the way I did with those guys. And I didn't understand this reborn then at all. And I got to reading in that other book after I got sober. And there's a story in there. This guy's name was Nicodemus. Yeah, Nicodemus was about like me, just dumber than the stump. <laughs> yeah. And he asked that guy, I said, what do you mean by being reborn? Do you mean I've got to go back into my mother's womb? See how dumb he was? And he looked at him and he shook his head and said, well, Nicodemus, don't you know you can't do that? Didn't you go to the university? Aren't you educated? You can't do that. He said, when I'm talking to you about being reborn, I'm talking about the renewing of your mind. Old ideas cast aside, new ones accepted. Reborn in my mind. I understood that then. And now I'm ready to do business. I'm ready to do the third step. And I knew what they did on Sunday morning at that little church up there about 11 o'clock. And I couldn't wait till I got there. And they basically asked people to come down there and do the third step prayers, what they do. So I waited till next Sunday. I got there about three or four minutes till 11. Well, I didn't want to get there too early. I might hear something that would help me. <laughs> so I got there about three or four minutes till 11, and sure enough, they asked people to do that. And I came down there, and I did this. They said, the book said we were now at step three. It said, many of us said to our makers, we understood him. God, I offer myself to you to build with me and to do with me as you will. Take away my difficulties that victory over them may bear witness that I would bear witness to those that I would help of your power, your love, and your way of life. May I do your will always. He said, we thought well before taking this tech, making sure that we were ready, that we could at last abandon ourselves utterly to him. And I don't know what exactly happened that particular morning, but I do know this. From that Sunday morning until this moment, my life hasn't been the same. It's as if I'd been walking on the dark side of the street all those years, and all of a sudden I'm on the sunny side of the street. And I don't know what happened, except I do know that my life has changed. Thank God. We thought well before taking this step, making sure we were ready, that we could at last abandon ourselves utterly to Him. I think the word utterly means completely, wholeheartedly, all the way, the entire ball of wax. I hope you don't make the mistake I did. First time I took step three, I got on my knees, which I very seldom did in those days. And I said, God, I offer myself to thee to build with me and do with me as thou wilt. Relieve me of the bondage of self that I may better do that well. Take away my difficulties, so on, so on, so forth. And as I finished it up, I said, now this applies to my alcohol. Don't fool with my sex life. Stay out of my money. I can handle that, too. God probably said, water and order. I can't go through with it. <laughs> I said, you take the alcohol, and I'll take care of the rest. Well, today I realize the fallacy in that is, as far as I know, God doesn't even drink. He don't want the alcohol. He wants me, and he wants all of me. Just think, if God could direct my thinking in all areas... It might even become better in my sex life. It might even become better in my money areas. It might even become better in all areas. And if my thinking becomes better in all areas, then surely my life will become better in all areas too. I think we need to realize this is really the decision we're making to turn our entire will and our entire life 
over the care and direction of God as we understand Him. We found it very desirable to take this spiritual step with an understanding person, such as our wife, best friend, or spiritual advisor. You know, back in the beginning, there was never any question about this. The new person was expected to take this step in the company of other human beings. The first step in the Oxford group tenets was surrender. And when a new person got ready to surrender, they would take them upstairs in Dr. Bob's house, three or four of the older members, they would all get down on their knees. The new person would make his surrender. Then after he was through, the older members would vote on how well he surrendered. (laughs) If he didn't do it good enough, he'd probably have to do it again later on. I think there's a valid reason behind this. Uh, You know, I'm told that we alcoholics are born to live in three dimensions. We're born to live with God and ourselves and our fellow human beings. And if we are praying with other human beings for the first time, We're beginning to fit ourselves back together in all three dimensions the way God intended in the first place. We alcoholics are the funniest people in the world. You know, we'll let our family see us on our knees in the bathroom, (laughs) hugging the porcelain bowl, (laughs) puking our guts up, morning after morning after morning. We come to AA and we try to straighten out our lives. And we're ashamed and embarrassed and let see people see us pray. Isn't that something? Praying in the company of other human beings is always better. Anybody I work with that I sponsor, I, I, I require that they take step three with me for two reasons. Number one, if they take it with me, I know they have taken it. That's the only way I know for sure. But the real reason is, is every time we do it together, it means more to me. And it has more strength and more power for myself. I think it's a great idea. Let's take about a 15 minute break and we're going to jump right into step four. See you in a little bit, okay? A little bit, okay?